Okay, let us uh, begin uh, online learning thoughts and experiences. My name is G K Suresh Kumar as you already know. We learn online all the time, right? You open up uh, any search, look for things, we are learning. Uh, we are picking up information, we are processing information, we are trying to understand various things based on the information and analysis that, that is presented online. All that is learning, therefore we learn all the time. If you look at formal online learning, nowadays they could be of two broad kinds. One of course is uh, what I call the NPTEL certification course type okay, or MOOCs as it is more uh, universally known as. Uh, this is, um, so, uh, these are courses that uh, are equivalent to our uh, own course. And uh, what happens in these courses is something like this. The number of learners is large, okay, thousands, uh, sometimes even ten thousands, our course runs in thousands. Learners have heterogeneous backgrounds. They could come from various different backgrounds. Uh, the motivation uh, for taking the course could be different amongst them. Learners have heterogeneous objectives. Okay, what they need from the course could be very different. For example, some of you might want to pick up an aspect of a course or a topic from the course uh, with which you are not very comfortable with and so on. Some of you might want to review, some of you might want to learn afresh and so on and so forth. So, there is a wide range of um, objectives uh, or what the learners need from the course and all that is perfectly fine. Therefore, uh, some learners would come and just pick up that and go forward. They would not want to look at the entire course. That is perfectly fine and so on and so forth. And learners have heterogeneous motivation level. Some of them are very motivated. Uh, in fact, the uh, variation motivation is huge uh, that you find here. The standardization level is very high. Uh, you had to formulate the question paper a certain way and so on and so forth that is told to you, you need to do that, things like that. Whereas, the pandemic induced is what I call the other type, okay, which is new. The usual classroom, the person to person classes have moved online, that is what I mean by pandemic induced, because the person to person classes are just not possible during the pandemic. The Students are reasonably homogeneous in their backgrounds, motivations, objectives and so on and so forth. They have come into a program, for example, a, a bachelor's or a master's in uh, biological engineering say because I am from that department. Uh, so, it is reasonably homogeneous. Standardization may not be high, uh, especially in IITs and so on and so forth where we decide what needs to be done. We make sure that the student, students learn a certain aspect and all the other things are geared towards that. The exception could be university exams and things like that where there is a good amount of standardization required uh, because of the way they operate. Resources are available for improving the first one, the MOOC type or the NPTEL certification course type uh, online learning. One of uh, the examples is the IIT Bombay's uh, learner centered MOOCs, which I think is on NPTEL itself right now. This is a nice uh, resource. There are so, so many resources to improve the uh, MOOC type online learning. Here our focus is the pandemic induced online learning. Let me briefly run you through what happened last year so that we refresh our memories, we set our base for further discussion. Our country went into a pandemic induced lockdown during the last week of March, uh, 24th March to be precise last year. There was an initial 21 day lockdown which get, got uh, extended continuously, uh, it kind of relaxed after a little bit but you know the lockdown was on. The students are still not back in our classes for example. After a few weeks. Uh, our institutions said uh, we will have to do what needs to be done, we, we need to move on and we may move to online learning to ensure timely graduation of students because the students need to graduate, they need to go on with their lives and so on and so forth and that was the main uh, motivation then. When we went into lockdown on 24th March, 
IIT Madras had about 5 weeks of instruction left. And suddenly everybody moved online after a few weeks, right, in the middle of the course. And uh, the people who were teaching were to continue online teaching also, right. Therefore, most faculty members tried to do the same things online as in a physical classroom on campus. That's natural because uh, it was a sudden move. I mean, that could not be avoided. And uh, because of that, people just started doing the same thing. Whereas some of us with uh, some online experience, say teaching NPTEL courses or something like that, we made appropriate changes. We knew that online is different, right? We'll come to that in a little bit. And therefore, we made appropriate changes essentially to improve the effectiveness. We will come back to this in a little while. Then what happened was with some relaxations, there were postponement in exams, assignment based grading was uh, made possible, take home exams were possible. Uh, take home exams are, have always been possible, but uh, with a more focus on that, more weightage for them and so on and so forth. With all that, we completed that semester. This is the Jan, May 2020 semester and ensured student graduation. However, for the non-graduating students, graduating students were in the final year. Okay? Uh, of course, first year, second year, third year, or sometimes fourth year if it's a five-year program and so on and so forth. The non-graduating students, despite best efforts by the institute, I'm going to list a few of these efforts because I was... Um, you know, I, I really liked those efforts. I was, um, I felt good that so much of effort was being made. The director made sure that he came and addressed us and made sure that things were in place and so on and so forth, which was very good. There were great efforts in ensuring access to, uh, to course materials. You know, you had to record all your lectures. Uh, you had to make them available appropriately. You need to make sure that resources were available. Some people could not access uh, the net, the speed of access or even access itself. They had to find some means. In, in fact, they found uh, places, the universities or national institutes, which could allow these students to go and download the material there, come back and so on and so forth. So, so they went to great lengths. Okay. And then they arranged proctored exams at some specialized centers, but these specialized centers are not many and therefore the students complained. They said we cannot travel, they were, they were afraid, and they had a point. Uh, they cannot travel, they cannot take the exams and things like that, they, therefore that could not be enforced. And they also said not all students who are, can take it, please take it, but there was some difficulty there. Then I think the institute resorted to uh, holding proctored exams at Kendriya Vidyalayas. They are many in number and that uh, kind of worked out for students who were willing to take the exam at that time. Not everybody took it, or rather a few didn't take it and so on and so forth. Despite all this, some students are yet as of today to take the final exams okay, for that semester a year ago. right? For some theory based courses and of course most lab based courses, they are yet to complete the courses. That's the current situation because they opted not to take these exams. They wanted to write in-person exams. They have not come back as yet. And when they come back, the institute will hold exams for them and uh, you know, make, uh, ensure, uh, and uh, provide an opportunity for them to complete those courses. And of course, online instruction continued for the next semester also, which is the August, November, or in this case, uh, August, December, September, December, depending on the course and things like that. The entire course was online. Okay. This is what happened. And um, if you look at some of these aspects, you know, the yeah, and entire course was there, and yeah, I'll, I'll come to that a little later. It may not be now. Some uh, the aspects of instruction from this is online we are talking about from the students attending the visual feedback was not guaranteed right various uh, appropriate reasons I mean uh, acceptable reasons the connectivity could have been a problem you you close down your videos your connectivity is better at least you could hear what others are saying the situation at home could have been very different. Um, the, uh, they may not have wanted others to know what goes on at home. They may not 
want to present uh, the homes and things like that, which is perfectly fine. Uh, there is a wide variation in the economic uh, status of students, right. And uh, it turned out to be a major limitation for most of us who hugely rely on visual feedback for teaching. Okay, we always do that. Uh, I think I mentioned it in this course also. Uh, we, I, we do that, uh, okay, let me limit to myself. I do that, uh, I see uh, some reasonable number of faces that are confused. I change tack, I explain it slightly differently so that it gets across. And when they get it, you know, the facial expression changes and I know that they have understood it. Okay, that was almost gone except for, you know, especially if you have Google Meet, you cannot see more than about six or eight people at a time, especially when you have your presentation on. If you have Zoom, probably more, uh, but then for various reasons, we were uh, on to Google Meet. I was on to Google Meet. This is also on Google Meet, by the way. And that is that is not possible. Mid-course corrections was, were not so easy. The visual feedback was completely missing. One had to get used to online meeting platforms. They were not so <laughs> easy how, how you present and whether the video goes across, they are able to see the full screen, whether the uh, sound goes along with it of the video, so on and so forth. It was a mess, a mess in the sense that different platforms are different in, in the details and uh, one had to really get used to them, do a lot of uh, searches, talk to people and get things going. Sometimes the connectivity is also a problem. Uh, once in a while, uh, the connectivity would fail, uh, although the connectivity inside the campus is good. Uh, once in a while, there are fluctuations and things like that. The preparation for most traditional instructors uh, just shifted from the classroom to online. And therefore, they were used to talking, they were probably used to some PowerPoint slides and so on and so forth. Therefore, they took the whole thing there and try to do essentially what they did in a classroom. And so all those kind of turned out to be the limitations. And another set of limitations came from meaningful summative evaluations. You know, you all know what summative evaluation is. I do not have to explain that to you. Synchronous exams are difficult, right? Uh, because uh, there is no guarantee that everybody in the class would be able to access the online exam at the same time, therefore synchronous is out and uh, due to student cheating. Okay. But the student cheating is not just country specific. Uh, there are a lot of uh, reports uh, you know, even decades ago where, uh, for example, Felder said that as long as grades are important, students will cheat. Okay. I have that quote, I can <laughs> probably dig it up for you. So that is not country specific, it, it is, that is the way people are students are. Honor codes do not seem to work well for us at all. I have tried it myself, it does not work. Some people say it works, Some I mean, most people say it does not work. And on top of it, I learned recently from a faculty that there are websites that provide answers in 5 minutes. Okay, all the person needs to do is copy paste, send it to the website, somebody there solves it, sends it back in 5 minutes. <laughs> the faculty member actually tried it and got the answer in 5 minutes. So if you do this, how can you hold in? online um, regular rather synchronous exam. This is not possible. And this has been the subject of uh, discussion amongst IIT Madras faculty. A lot of suggestions have been made and are being made. They are debate, debated by the IIT Madras faculty. For example, some included TV uh, or uh, using a teaching assistant to invigilate 10 students at a time uh, using the cameras that on the student side and so on, and the laptop cameras. Revealing one question at a time, you give one question, then the student solves it, sends it back and only then the next question will be available. Randomizing the order of questions, randomizing numbers and numerical problems and so on and so forth. Various things people have tried and they report different degrees of success. Some people say that ah, it worked well for me and some people say what do you mean it, <laughs> it did work for me and so on and so forth. It's, it's, it's been only what about uh, less than a year, right? So uh, th these things are new. And so nothing seems to work for all as yet. And as somebody said, 
it's kind of an arms race okay you do something students are smart students are very smart uh, i never tried to outsmart students at all I, uh, it's uh, I, i i just don't even attempt that okay so they'll figure out ways and so you do something they do something you do something else they do something else so it's some sort of an arms race that <laughs> goes on there is just no i i don't see a point in that and as a result the students faculty members institution administrators parents they were all affected uh, in the learning process there have been some studies in the literature some early studies came out as early as may 2020 which means the work must have been written up in april 2020 uh in some journals okay the first reports are actually quite positive uh if you read them they said ha online learning is great we should actually move some of our uh, regular courses to online whenever we um, resume and things like that there were certain advantages that were mentioned and so on and so forth this is within a month of uh, lockdown but over time people started realizing things there were major effects on students some of them included access difficulties of course demands at home i had a student who who needed to go and work in the farm her father was a, an agriculturist and initially i didn't believe uh, because the student wanted some postponement and things like that then i said you know get a note from your father the father actually called and said yes whatever he says is true then i had to believe him uh, situation at home because uh, many fa- family members were affected by the pandemic they even passed away unfortunately so you know multiple family members passing away it's not easy for a student to handle huge inequalities that i just mentioned in terms of access in terms of uh, economic status and so on and so forth and a huge in- uh, some inability to cope sometimes a huge inability to cope in some students uh, they were wondering what to do you know that kind of a thing there were mental issues as a result of that and there was a major impact on learning and of course there were a lot of effects on faculty members also the teachers most were inexperienced with online learning right and they had to suddenly switch even for the ones with experience for me uh, i have uh, done what 10 11 years of uh, nptel courses my very first course which is not a certification course it was a regular course 40 lecture thermodynamics course that was 10 11 years ago i recorded the lectures for that and even for me it was a big jump i was excited to try this out because i could see possibilities i could see huge differences i could see challenges and so it became very exciting and this is uh, so it, it it was a big jump even for people with experience faculty burnout has been uh, reported uh, in the literature the situation at home could have been very different from what they were used to and in the middle of that they needed to go and uh, take classes and things like that whatever uh, talked about for the students could have been equally applicable to the faculty and uh, as a result ineffectiveness in ensuring learning happened okay so all this happened because of the way things happened uh, we didn't have much of a control over it we had to suddenly move we did the best that we could and as a result these things happened which affected learning okay. and what people need to realize i think is that effectiveness in pandemic induced online learning it's a totally different ball game it's a totally different aspect from classroom effectiveness whatever you do to be effective in class cannot be directly transported to an online mode of learning 